an aircraft carrier is considered to be the most vital sea-based asset. Besides offering an incomparable military instrument with the ability to project tactical air power over long distances, it also projects air power from the sea. It is the centerpiece of modern combat fleets. Do you have any idea how many crew members are needed to carry out the operations on an aircraft carrier? Well, the answer is over 6,000. That's a pretty huge number. With such a huge number of crew members, the operations are supposed to be carried out perfectly, isn't it? But we cannot say that there isn't a possibility that a person will fall over into the sea. So what exactly happens if a US Navy sailor falls off an aircraft carrier? What happens when someone falls over and is missing in the sea? We'll let you know everything about this. However, we would definitely want to know what you all have to think about this. Let us know in the comments. You have to stay with us till the end of our video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, press the notification bell to never miss out on any updates. With that, let's begin, shall we? Now, a question arises. Has anyone fallen from an aircraft carrier? And the answer is a resounding yes. As we already know that there is always a guarantee of the safety procedures on an aircraft carrier. And to be honest, it's nearly impossible for the crew to typically fall off the aircraft carrier. But there have been cases when a member of the aircraft fell off into the sea. The height of a contemporary aircraft carrier can reach 10 meters. Imagine what it would feel like to fall from such a great height. The surface of the water would feel like cement. The reason is that the force of gravity acting on the water is the same as the ground itself. And the person can die if he falls in an incorrect position before they can be rescued. Unlike other warships, the aircraft carrier is designed with protective measures. Each US aircraft carrier contains 50,000 tons or more of steel plates. It has guardrails that are retractable and relatively easy to operate because the fighter wouldn't be able to take off or land if all the normal guardrails are installed on the deck of the aircraft. Besides that, it also has a protective net and serves as protection to prevent crew members from falling into the water. The deck of the aircraft carrier is designed in such a way that it can accommodate an enormous runway for takeoff and a runway for fighter aircraft, serving its primary purpose to transport those aircraft. Nevertheless, the crew members also undergo rigorous training that makes it impossible for anyone to fall into the ocean mistakenly. So, what are the steps that are followed when a crew member falls off an aircraft carrier? If there's someone who falls overboard and if there's any person who notices that, you'll report the man overboard, starboard, or port sides in the navigation bridge. One thing that is very important and should be kept in mind is to provide the side of the ship, as the ship will be turned in that direction. Even if the person who has fallen in the water is not visible, a life ring is thrown over the same side immediately, and this marks the approximate point the person went over for navigation purposes. There is an officer who controls the engines or the con. He is responsible for ordering an alert to be sounded throughout the ship and a Williamson turn to the direction the person fell from. Now, if you have no idea about the Williamson turn, it's an immediate and hard turn that puts the ship's heading about 60 degrees from its original course in the first place. It does that before turning hard back in the opposite direction until the ship's heading is 20 degrees off the opposite direction of its original heading. This turn comes in when a shipboard recovery is possible and will be attempted. Some sailors are prompted by the man overboard alarm to lower one or more boats to form a rescue party. However, these sailors are not directly involved or associated with rescue efforts, but they assemble at their muster stations to be counted. Muster counts are reported to the bridge, which is responsible for giving some idea of who is missing from the ship's company and is presumably in the water. Now, the ship begins its search and rescue effort not only to rescue the person overboard, but also to recover them. Let's hear about some experiences of Tim Dees, a retired police officer. He said, I've been aboard several times when people have gone overboard. One time I saw a Marine being blown over the fantail by a jet blast. A fellow Marine jumped in after her and they both required rescuing while having broken a few bones on impact with the water. They had flotation gear and the rescue helicopter that is always flying nearby during flight ops picked them up, aided by a rescue swimmer. He also narrated another incident from a night when a deck ejected from an S3. 
He said that the naval flight officers ended up hanging in a chute for some time from some of his antennae, which also inspired his new call sign, Swinger. After that, the pilot ended up behind the ship. Even though the helicopter was less than a mile away, it took 20 minutes to find and recover him in the darkness. Whew! That was indeed tough work. Tim Dees gave a lot of valid information, but the fact is that different types of ships will work differently when it comes to the man overboard. However, the carrier can reverse the course. Typically, it has an aircraft that can induct the surge more efficiently. And we're sure that a sailor adrift would prefer to see an SH-53 hovering overhead and lowering a SAR swimmer than to see a hundred kilotons of steel bearing down on him. There's a little perspective we can add to the concept of man overboard that we discussed during the first half of the video. Many people who were in the Navy claimed that they stood aft lookout watch while underway. This watch station is also called the man overboard watch, as they were on the fantail looking at and probably in a better position to see a man in the water than anyone else on the ship. According to Dan Tannehill, a former machinery repairman third class at the United Nations Navy, I was on a 4,100 ton ship, USS Samuel B. Roberts, no higher honor. This is about 1 20th the size of a carrier. While on aft lookout, I had the constant churning of the prop wash and the exhaust of two Detroit diesel V16s and one LM2500 gas turbine drowning out all other sounds. At night, the sea itself was the darkest black imaginable, except for when the stern light illuminated the prop wash. If someone had fallen overboard at night, there's no way I could have heard the splash. And the only indication I could have possibly seen is when the prop wash turned blood red. He advises them to not fall over the side. The Anderson churn, better known as the single churn, is also a maneuver frequently performed immediately after learning of a person having gone overboard into the sea. It's typically done to retrieve the casualties in the shortest period feasible. This churn is implemented when the point is still in sight. Besides this, the Williamson churn that was discussed earlier in the video might be more appropriate, because traveling back to the initial place will take more time with either option. In the best case scenario, when one is dealing with someone overboard, the vessel should always be maneuvered up by the individual. This is the best way to reduce the injury, and it should also be kept in mind that the engine of the vessel should be turned off when the person is moved well forward by the propellers. In the event of a man overboard situation on a sailboat, the rapid turn or the quick turn is the best ordinary course of action for the sailing ships in the case when there are very few crew members or when the vessel is operating on rough seas. This method can still be considered the most reliable method with the utmost potential despite the existence of other techniques as it prevents a jibe. Now, we have come to the end of our video. If you like this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell icon because we don't want you to miss out on any updates from our channel. Thanks for watching.